MGTV Η ομογένεια κοντά σα. I'm Afrodite Cotrocios and I'm with the Hellenic News of America and MGTV. Tonight we are at a wonderful event at Holy Trinity in Manhattan honoring the Honorable Mariana Vardinoyanis and it's an event hosted by the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce in association with the Hellenic American Culture Foundation in honor of El Pida. Thank you very much and enjoy the program by MGTV. whose dedication, vision, and fortitude are unsurpassed. To give you a little bit background of the, the foundation, it was established four years ago to organize and promote high quality, innovative, and relevant educational and cultural programs for persons interested in the history and the legacy of Greece. To date, the foundation has sponsored and co-sponsored over 20 events in art, music, literature, music, history, politics, and other disciplines. The foundation's mission is to promote cultural programs in order to engage the community, to explore and rediscover the importance of Greek contributions. Tonight's presentation will assess the impact of the crisis in Greece on the children of Greece, and I'm sure will provide us with great insight and thoughtfulness about the critical issues of the potential long-term adverse effects. Now, let me turn the evening over to Manas Kumarakis, who is Council of Greece here in New York. Thank you. Expenses, your eminence, your excellency, my great pleasure to attend tonight's special event and uh, on behalf of uh, the Consulate General of Greece in New York, I would like to extend my warm welcome to Mrs. Latinoyanis. Tonight's topic is a particularly difficult one, not only because it tackles a very sensitive social issue, but also because it is uh, really difficult to measure the impact of an ongoing phenomenon. How to analyze and assess it while it happens. The Greek economic crisis is not only financial. It is primarily social, political, a systemic and profound wood in the fabric of the Greek society. Our entire microcosm is deeply shaken. The values and our way of life will forever change, but hopefully, for the better. 
the cost of the crisis is um, of this crisis growing day by day with the dazzling numbers. But how can the human cost be estimated? The immediate impacts are visible. Impoverishment, stagnation, desperation. What could be the long-term results and particularly its imprint on the future generation? I could not imagine a person more fitting to present this very crucial topic than Mrs. Vartinoyanis. Not only as a matter of fact, but mostly due to her long-standing commitment and experience in the field of philanthropy. Mrs. Vartinoyanis embodies in the most complete sense the idea of philanthropy as Eschilos described in his drama Prometheus Desmotis. It is about the love for human beings, not by providing charity, but by giving them the chance to stand on their own feet. Mrs. Vartinoyanis, a distinguished national and international philanthropist with an endless list of uh, initiative and this year the recipient of the 2015 Robert Kennedy Human Rights Ripple of Hope Award chose to focus on the family and the child. The importance of the primary cell of family for the Greek society is a given. It is my firm belief that our efforts should focus on the family and the children in particular in order to protect what is really at stake because of this crisis, the future of Greece, the future of our country. In conclusion, I would like to thank the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce and Mrs. Nancy Papayuanu for the invitation. And uh, we look forward, Mrs. Papai and Mrs. Vardinoyanis, to present your ideas and to share with us your long experience. Thank you very much. Your Eminence, Geron and Diviso Dimitrios, Honorable Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Mrs. Vardinogiani, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, dear friends. As the President of the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce and President of Atlantic Bank, from my tip of my heart, I would like to thank you very much for being here today. Especially my staff from the Chamber and my staff from my office at, at the bank. They did, in one month, an amazing job to put this event together for us to have the opportunity and one of the proudest moments of my life to present you, Mrs. Vardinogiani, an example for us, for all of us, for her philanthropic efforts to bring the world together to do the good thing for the needy people. I'm referring, of course, to Mrs. Mariana Vardinogiannis, who is the founder and president of the Mariana Vardinogiannis Foundation and the founder of Elpida, Hope Association, which focuses on the care of children with cancer. Mrs. Vardinogiannis has made us all proud with her great philanthropic work, and this year she makes us more prouder than ever as is the recipient of the Officer of the Legion of Honor of the French Republic and the prestigious 2015 Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Ripple of Hope Award, an event that will take place tomorrow evening. She happens to be very generous when it comes to give to relieve suffering people. She does not compromise when the sick and needy children ask for her help. She has taken the initiative to build the House of Hope for the children with cancer, and she's setting the example from all of us. Again, she is the person that her great work speaks louder than any word. Thank you very much all for being here, and here is Mrs. Vardino Yanni. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, so many months away from Greece, and yet 
I feel like I have never been closer to my country. This is because I, start, I stand among you, among people who really keep Greece in their hearts, being in fact its best representatives. And for one more reason, I'm here to share with you the great honor bestowed upon me by the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Foundation through the Ripple of Hope Awards and I'm, that I'm receiving tomorrow. I'm feeling really humbled and proud as a Greek to accept this special honor by a foundation which fights for democracy, freedom, and justice. The ideas that were born in Greece and are identified across the world with the Greek civilization. Ladies and gentlemen, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to express my most heartfelt thanks to all of you for this warm and most touching welcome, especially Mrs. Nassim Papayuanu for the organization of this beautiful gathering, which means so much to me. I'm coming from a country which is suffering by a severe economic crisis. A crisis that runs through society, destroying any will for creativity and spreading a sense of insecurity. If we want to describe this crisis in Greece today, we can do it in two ways. We can talk about numbers or we can talk about people. We usually choose numbers. Numbers, however, can never express the soul and the sense of things and tend to lead society for false way of living. It is the people who make the difference, even in the midst of, the, of this crisis. It is the people who shape the future through the, that actions, through the stance they keep when faced with the circumstances through their minor or major decisions. Crisis can produce society of indifference or societies of solidarity, societies of exploitation or societies of compassion. And it is us who will leave our mark in this tragic era. I believe in people. This is why you will never hear from me pessimistic words about my homeland. You will only hear words of pride because Greece is still producing enlightenment honorable, worthy, and distinct people, as you are here today, and as those in Greece who by hundreds help the poor and the refugees providing food and medicines. I can only be proud of the potential of our nation. History is shaped by people, not by numbers. And Greek people have been proved to be great fighters throughout the centuries. After the economic crisis and the poverty that followed the Second World War and the Civil War, the Greeks who emerged contributed to the progress of our world, like many of you here today, great scientists, successful businessmen, Nobel Prize laureates, and most of all happy and creative individuals. Therefore, in all honesty, I'm not afraid of the economic crisis for our children. Even if they have to go to school with no heating, live in homes where colors has been lost and in general, environment that most certainly affects their, th uh, their thoughts and dreams. I am afraid of, for us, my friends, that we might not prove worthy of the circumstances, that we might fail in conveying the message that difficulty in strength because it teaches us to fight. It makes us measured and modest and in the end more persistent and stronger. I'm afraid for us that we might fail in teaching the children of crisis that true wealth lies in our hearts and in our knowledge and not in the economic power. I'm afraid for us that when speaking to our children about this <coughs> crisis, we will forget the true Greece, the values of the Greek civilization, and the obligations we have due to the fact 
that you were born Greek. Ladies and gentlemen, the main issue on the agenda of the entire Western world today, besides terrorism, is the refugee problem. The image of the little boy Elan became the symbol of our civilization that is tested before the eyes of its children, having no answer for their big question, why? No explanation about how we reach this point where we allow our children to get lost in a path we are calling a path of hope. Hope for what tomorrow? I believe that this hope lies on our hands, on each one of us. As a minimum contribution on our side, our foundation recently launched the Refugee Child Medical Assistance Program called We Care. In cooperation with the Central Union of Municipalities of Greece, the Archbishop of, of Greece, the Athens Medical Society, and the Hagia Sophia Children Hospital, we are offering medi medical care, vaccinations, and food supplies to refugee children. Moreover, UNESCO is considering it as a model program of partnership between NGO and municipalities, and it tends to promote it through the European network of cities, about 780 cities. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that sooner or later, Greece will overcome the problems. And there are many of us, both inside and outside of Greece, who will support our children, help them come out of this crisis. However, I'm calling everyone to share an even greater vision. Let it be a ripple of hope that will run through this entire generation of the crisis, leading it to other paths of true values and to a substantial and useful life. I would like to close with this which through the definition that Robert F. Kennedy himself gave for the ripple of hope. Few will have the greatness to bet history itself, but each of us can work to change a small portion of events. It is from numberless, diverse acts of courage and belief that human history is set. It's time a man stands upon for an idea or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, he sent forth a tiny ripple of hope, and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy, and daring those ripples beat the current, which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Having devoted my life to the fight against childhood cancer for more than 25 years through a PILA association, having witnessed seven 80, 780 children winning a second chance in life. I'm convinced that collective action and the power of true faith can bring a big chance towards the world that we are all dreaming of. So let these children be our source of inspiration through their unbelievable courage and strength. Let them be our symbols of hope as the everyday heroes that remind us that everything is possible. Thank you. Thank you very much for you. Merry Christmas. And I wish you to all of you, to your beloved family, to bring peace and love to the whole world, the, the, the birth of Christ. Thank you so much. offered by two very significant organizations, the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce and the Hellenic American Cultural Foundation. I would like to express thanks, deep thanks, for this evening and congratulate the organizers. That was a wonderful opportunity to hear someone who is a real ambassador of kindness and care for children through a life, the whole life of her, Mrs. Vardirianis has been doing exactly this kind of thing. I remember the visit in Elpida uh, 15 years ago, and then we have a nice presentation in Zapion in Athens of our children choir 
for the benefit of peace again, and we have been connected and following, and we are really thankful to God for persons like that who are an honor for our humanity in a world which seems to be sometimes run in crazy, unreasonable, and unbelievable ways. So to have this type of people is something very important. Now, next to Mrs. Vardimagianis is also a very significant person tonight. It's someone representing the Kennedy family. It's a Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, that he will give the award tomorrow. And the Kennedy family has been, has been a family with a legendary offering to America, to public life, to human rights, to concern for the suffering. And thank you for being here. We have also tonight, uh, I recognize quite a big number of people who are really with a tender heart for children and for uh, humanitarian work. Our diplomat, Mrs. Buras, at the United Nations is such a person. She just came from serving in Lebanon for four years. And she's carrying now this kind of atmosphere for the Middle East, not in a somehow objective, neutral, distance way, but in a very connected, in a very related way. Mrs. Vardunagan, as you can see now, but you created with your coming here. <laughs> and we're bringing uh, these people together here. And we thank you for that. The ordinary interpretation of the saying is, yeah, we have to be innocent like the children. I see here plenty of parents and grandparents, and you know that sometimes children are not so innocent. So this could not be the only reason. What is the, mean, the real meaning of being like children? The notion of dependence. A child depends on the parents. We have to depend on God, on what we are doing. This is becoming like children. This is loving children. Take them as a model of this total beautiful dependence. And our dependence of God is much, much stronger and much more safe and much more productive than any other dependence. Perhaps it's time to disconnect us from wrong dependencies and start depending on a God who became a human being. We are going to celebrate his birth on Christmas. And I wish to all of you a very, very blessed Christmas and a very happy new year. And I also wish to Mrs. Valentino Gianni and the Kennedy uh, effort and initiative to have the biggest possible success in what they are doing with the help and the assistance of the people and of God. Thank you. May God bless. I would like to invite Mrs. Kennedy just to share uh, her view about Mrs. Bartino Giannis and to tell us some words about tomorrow's evening ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. I am um, so happy to be here this evening with all of you. I thank you, Father, for your incredible words and for urging all of us to love one another, to love one another even more than we love ourselves better place. And um, for those of you who don't know Mariana Bardino Yanis, this is one of the most extraordinary human beings I've ever met in my life. I really don't know anyone who personifies that idea of loving others more than herself and Mariana. because Mariana is the nicest, kindest, most loving person, but she's also brilliant. And she's got a, an advanced master's degree in, um, in ancient Greek, and she saved the Acropolis Museum. She started this amazing cancer center where she brings kids in from all across Europe 
who are going to die of cancer. And she treats them for free, but not just them. She also brings their families there. And she, so they, can't, they don't have to be alone. And she gets jobs for their families, and, they can, and she gives them a place to live where they, while their kids are getting treated. And everything, whenever there's a problem in front of her, Mariana figures out what the solution should be. And that's just so amazing. And I think that, you know, during this refugee crisis, a lot of people have said, we can't do anything more. We, we're full. We can't give anything more. And Mariana said, no, we have to find a way to give more. And that's truly, and it, you know, setting an example for all of us in Greece and around the world to live up to that idea of loving others even more than we love ourselves. And I'll just end with this. My father, Bobby Kennedy, um, when after his brother died, after Uncle Jack died, President Kennedy died, um, he was he went to a very very deep depression. And if you ask my mother, what pulled him out of that depression, she will say it was reading the ancient Greeks. And. And the phrase that he used to quote was um, from Aeschylus, and it was that we're all in a quest in life to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of the world. So tonight, I want to thank everyone in this room for the work that you're doing, and especially Mariana, to, for all the work you've done to tame the savageness of man and show us indeed how to make gentle the life of the world. Thank you very much. TV USA. Οι δραστηριότητες της ελληνοαμερικανικής κοινότητας με βίντεο και πλήρες ρεπορτάζ. Επισκεφτείτε την ιστοσελίδα μας mgtvusa.com. Καλύπτουμε καθημερινά τα γεγονότα στην Ομογένεια.